What are the best ways to keep all your gear powered up and charged on the Camino de Santiago? I'm Mike and I make helper videos on the Camino. Every pilgrim must decide what electronic or electrical devices they are going to take and how you intend to power them should be a major deciding factor. People commonly carry things like a flashlight, sports watch and of course the trusty old mobile phone. I also saw people carrying things like iPads, electric shavers, digital SLR cameras, video cameras, drones, I took a 360 degree video camera, and there are even a few big laptops. One electrical device I dreamed of was a blender so I could make some delicious smoothies. However, all these devices need electrons to run. They're only electrons! There are three key methods for putting volts into your circuits. Mains power, disposable dry cell batteries, and rechargeable batteries. In Spain, the wall sockets and plugs are European standard type C and type F, the ones with the round pins. You can get pin adapters so your home pins, like the parallel blades in the USA or the angled ones here in Australia, can be made to fit the EU sockets. The big issues is these don't change the voltage or frequency, which in Spain is 230 volts at 50 hertz. Plug in your 110 volt hairdryer and it'll blow up. We use 220 volt current. He was found in his hotel room, impaled upon a large electrical device. Although I had already purchased a pin adapter for our Camino, I decided to only carry one thing that plugged into the wall and it didn't need a pin adapter, but I'll come back to that. Many people carry dry cell battery powered devices such as a flashlight or a small camera as you can buy AA or AAA batteries easily all along the way. Just take a set with you for your device and when they go flat you can buy new ones as needed and throw the old ones away. It sounds great, however the batteries are not like a plastic water bottle where you can see how much is left inside. If you are relying on your torch, walking in the dark or maybe you take lots of photographs with your camera, when the batteries run out you're stuck. So you need to carry spares. Spares weigh a lot and they are dead weight until needed. Plus, if you use size AA and AAAs, you need to carry two sets of spares, one for both sizes. Rechargeable batteries are great in that you can top them up way before you run out of power. And while you can get rechargeable AA's and AAA's, these need a special charger and that's extra weight. It's like carrying an extra set of disposables. You need to be by mains power to charge them anyway. They're just not that practical. However, some things have built-in batteries and charging circuits, like your mobile phone. We targeted things that had built-in rechargeable battery. For our torches, we carried two each. Sounds extravagant, doesn't it? But have a look at what we took. Our lights have built-in rechargeable batteries. They run for up to 15 hours on a single charge. They're USB rechargeable. And the real kicker, is that these two combined weighed far less than just one AAA powered headlamp. And the second little flashlight can be hooked on your backpack. In fact, flashlights are so important, I'm going to do an entire episode on those. So make sure you subscribe to find out when that comes along. I made the decision a few months before leaving for Camino that we would only carry USB rechargeable devices. It meant I only needed a USB charger. However, this presents new problems such as how many things could I charge at once? How long does each device take to charge? And how can I swap devices when it's finished charging if I'm already asleep in my albergue? There are five ways to charge a USB device. A wall charger, a power bank, solar panels, crank handle generator, and a fire generator. Crank generators and fire generators do exist, but they're simply not practical for pilgrims. I considered a solar charger with panels to hang off the back of my pack. They produce an okay amount of power for their weight and while they do work when it's quite sunny, when it's early, late, overcast or rainy, they give no power at all and still weigh the same amount. The most practical method of course is a wall mains powered charger. The limitation is it can only be used at your albergue or for short periods at a bar, cafe or restaurant if they don't mind you using their power points. Plus there's always the added risk of walking off and leaving your devices behind the counter charging at the bar. A power bank is basically a storage device for electrons. It's a bit like filling your water bottle now so that you can drink from it later. 
You charge the power bank with a wall charger when the mains power is available and you can use that stored power anytime. You can charge your devices in your pack as you walk. Depending upon the capacity of your power bank, you might be able to fully charge your phone once or twice before it goes flat. The bigger the capacity, the bigger the weight. Oh, that pilgrim's nemesis. Weight. We decided that all our electrical devices would be charged from a USB source. Between my 11-year-old son and myself, we had two mobile phones, four torches, two Bluetooth headsets, a video camera, a 360-degree video camera, and two heart rate monitor sports watches. And they were all charged by a USB socket. With so many devices, we would need lots of chargers and lots of pin adapters to bring from home. Instead, we purchased a cheap multi-port charger from China that already had the right EU pins. This meant no pin adapters. This 51 gram device could charge three or more items at once, including a fast charge item. Oh yeah, I put stickers on everything with its own weight, so I wouldn't have to keep re-weighing things all the time. Plus I stuck an email address on anything that I might leave behind. All our devices were charged by just two multi-port wall chargers and a single 10,000 milliamp hour Xiaomi power bank that had two output ports. The two output model weighed only 20 grams more than the single output model, hardly any extra weight, but it meant we could charge two items at once. A typical charging day would start in the afternoon. Arriving at our Albergay, we would find the nearest power point and start charging our phones, power bank, headsets, and sports watches in that priority as they were usually well down by the end of a day's walk. We always got priority for the power points at Albergays and bars because with our multi-port charging sockets, we could fit up to nine devices charging from a double power point. Most pilgrims only had a single charger, so two power points could only charge two devices. With so many spare ports, we always made sure to offer it to other pilgrims so they could charge off our device, and it was a nice way to make some extra friends. If we wandered into town for supplies or sightseeing, we would take our phones, headsets, and sports watches off the charge, leaving the power bank on and maybe putting the torches on or the flashlights on if they were a little bit low. It also meant that wearing our sports watches, we got the extra steps and heart data for walking into town. The rest of the evening, I would make sure everything was topped up and charged. During the night, I might watch a movie, listen to an audiobook, or play music on my phone through my wireless headset. It was a handy diversion against the noise of the snorers. If the power point was handy, I might keep the phone topped up on the wall charger or topped up off the power bank. In the morning, I would top up any devices that were used during the night with the priority on the power bank as you can't charge it while you're walking. Walking, I would charge anything with the power bank if needed. At longer stops or meals, I would charge our sports watches or our headphones, just topping them up a little bit while we rested. In the afternoon, I would top up the phones from the power bank as we walked. We would often listen to music on our headsets if we were not talking to other pilgrims. Getting to the next Albergay, the cycle would repeat. Not that kind of cycle. No, not a wash cycle. Uh, look, getting to the next Albergay, we would repeat the charging process. Actually, saying it all out loud like this, it sounds like we were spending all day and night charging. However, it was much more relaxed and intuitive than it sounds. Basically, with a multi-port USB charger, a power bank, and a basic charging routine, you'll never have flat devices either. All our devices worked on either micro USB or USB-C leads. I specially purchased short USB leads in both formats, uh, especially for the trip. I also ordered some of these 90 degree ends so that you don't bump and damage the sockets on your device as they are jostling around in the back of your pack. This actually worked out really good. Sometimes I found the power point was too far away or perhaps high up on the wall and a longer lead in the mix would have actually been quite nice. Next time, I will take mostly short 90 degree leads and one long lead, about three feet or a meter long. Plan out your devices and charging patterns well in advance so you can make good purchasing decisions and your Camino will be happily charged too.
Got any questions about charging on the Camino? Maybe you have some tips you came up with. Perhaps you have a theory as to why I'm wearing this t-shirt for today's episode. Drop a comment below. If you liked it, please click like and subscribe so you can find out when the next content is coming out. It also helps with my rankings on YouTube so we can share the Camino love with more people. Thanks for watching and have a buen Camino. Thank you.